We're talking about win a league players in round three and four. I say round three and four because together, these two picks can be a, a big difference maker for your squad. I'm not saying the first and second round picks are easy calls. I'll have a video on round two and round one. Who are the best picks to grab in round one, round two? But I wanted to talk about round three and round four because there are players falling in rounds three and four in 2022, different than other years that I like as much as a lot of the guys getting taken at 12 through 24. Did you just say you can find someone around three that's comparable to number 14 overall Smitty? yeah bob i just said that let's talk about who these players might be the fantasy football show it begins right now this is the fantasy football show with your host smitty I'm actually not going to draft at 1.6 and 2.7 in this video because I don't want to distract from the topic at hand. Who we like in round three, who we like in round four. And the interesting thing is that when you take a player at 3.2 or 3.8 or 4.1 or 4.8, it doesn't really matter. Meaning you can reach on a player at 3.8 and it doesn't matter because you're so deep into the draft, 3.2, 3.8, you're not losing any value. If you take a guy at 1.1 that should go at 1.12, that's a very different scenario the players i'm going to talk about they're worthy of a little bit of a reach so who do i love in round three who's my favorite round three player right now i've made it no secret whatsoever that Brees hall's becoming my favorite third round player however i really love the idea of getting him at 4.1 4.2 4.3 if you have a late third round pick so let's say instead of 3.6 you ended up having something around the 310 you could flirt with the idea of taking Hall at 4.2 and taking somebody else at, at 3. Point whatever. You just have to ask yourself, is Hall more likely to fall or the player that you might draft in the third round in place of Hall and then let Hall try and drop to the fourth round? Is it worth running the risk of losing Hall? Are there more replaceable players for the other player? You have to ask yourself that question because... Honestly, I tend to lean in the direction of reaching on Hall, meaning if I'm drafting in this draft slot right here, 1.6, that means I'd have the 3.6 and the 4.7. I'm way more likely to grab Brees Hall at 3.6 than to, to press my luck and try and get him at 4.7 and hope that no one else takes him. Hope there's nobody out there that, that knows what time it is that it's Brees Hall time because I'll be devastated if they grab Brees Hall and I think I can get cute and let him fall to 4.7. I'm not doing it. I'm drafting him. I'm going to reach for him. There's nothing wrong with taking Hall at 3.6 if his ADP starts lingering around 4.1 to 4.2. Who cares? Grab your guy. Grab your league winner. As I mentioned, grabbing Hall at 3.6 instead of 4.2 is not a big deal. In another example, Lamb at, I don't know if his ADP is 2.1, 2.2, and you take him at 1.4, that's a huge mistake. Even if you couldn't trade and you're like, I gotta get my guy, there's no way I'm gonna get Lamb down here at, at the third to last pick. I gotta take him at 1.3 or I won't own him. Well, then don't own him. Play him more leagues. Use the odds game to draft the players at smart values. And in leagues where you miss out on a guy you want, well, you play in another league, you'll find him there. Don't be don't be reaching on first and second round guys to a major degree. Very, very different than reaching for Hall. So Hall's my favorite third round player. And let me tell you real briefly why. He checks every box to become the next JT. You heard me right, Jonathan Taylor. I don't know how many times I can explain this, in Warning. fact, it gets me Warning. pretty Smitty bothered approaching when people territory. come at me and try and tell me Warning. that Brees Hall Warning. isn't worthy Threshold of third round value, that the Jets are... Alert. Maximum levels reached. Prepare for transformation. Alert. Maximum levels... Ooh. Time for a Smitty. Brees Hall, I'll make this short because I've talked about this a number of times on the live show, but Brees Hall is literally my favorite third round player by far. And I love Herbert in round four. 
I love Joe Burrow in really late four, early five. And I get a lot of crap for taking Burrow at, at late four. You took an early QB. Yeah, we'll do another video on why early QB is not a bad thing. This regurgitated negativity toward early QBs out of control. And even though everyone knows my stance, I got to redo a video each year to correlate it to where the quarterbacks are going because it's an important topic. I'm not an early quarterback drafter only. I'm I'm a I, I'm a late drafting quarterback guy. I draft Trey Lance. I draft Russell Wilson. I love Jalen Hurts. I take everybody, but because nobody defends early quarterback, I find myself having to do a lot of ranting on it. But as far as Brees Hall, he checks every box to be the next Jonathan Taylor. He's in an amazing situation, and everybody that keeps regurgitating the. It's the Jets. They've never had a good running back. They're not going to have a good running back. They haven't had a good running back in a decade. Look, we heard the same thing about the Bengals. So the Bengals, they're, how, how is Jamar Chase going to be good? How is Joe Burrow going to really turn into a top three quarterback? Now everybody loves Joe Burrow. Now everybody loves Jamar Chase. Now these guys are absolute monsters. I did a video and I think an Instagram post at the beginning of like January saying that Jamar Chase was number four overall worthy. People ripped me to shreds. I posted this before the Super Bowl. I posted this at the beginning of the playoffs. And I remember because people were at, coming from my neck saying the Bengals, the Bengals. Like, how are you talking about Jamar Chase like this? Then when they went to the Super Bowl and your boy Smitty said the Bengals would win the division, mind you. But when they went to the Super Bowl, people backed off a little, but I still got a lot of pushback. Jamar Chase, top four, you're crazy. Jamar Chase goes in the top four, top five all the time now. So Brees Hall going at 3.5 or even 3.4, 3.2 or 3.1. While it seems crazy to you now, I promise you, or I almost promise you, because anything can happen. This guy, Brees Hall could climb into the middle of round two, if the hype gets real, if he does some amazing things in practice or in the preseason, and the preseason might be too late for his ADP to climb quick enough, except for in really late drafts. But I do believe, coach speak, anything could drive Brees Hall's value up tremendously. It could happen really quick. Drop of a hat, boom, he goes to mid-second round value. Let me say this one more time for the people in the back that are complaining and they think I'm crazy. Brees Hall is this year's version of last year's Najee Harris. And if you say different situation, oh my God, different offensive line. They don't have any backups. You got Michael Carter in the way. You only had, you only had Snell Smitty. How dumb of you to say this when a lot of the people saying this to me right now, yelling at their computer screen, yelling at their phone, you're the same person that said I was crazy liking Najee at 10 to 14 overall. We had a comment in the chat the other day. Somebody said, well, you got lucky on the Najee thing. We got lucky on the Najee thing. Are you out of your mind? Brees Hall is Najee Harris. And the thing is, if you had to pay... Now, I understand the Michael Carter thing is a little bit of a problem for a lot of people. I understand it, it adds some ambiguity. But guess what? Just like Melvin Gordon is a gift to Javante Williams prospective owners, so is Michael Carter. If you took Michael Carter off the roster, if Michael Carter tore a knee, don't, I hope he doesn't, but if he did, then Brees Hall would climb to 14 overall on ADP. It's a phantom fear. I know there's some potential risk that Michael Carter could be used a lot more than I think, and I'm not dumb or naive to think they could use both of them equally out of the gate. That's fine. The season's long. Rookies are used to a shorter college season. They hit a rookie wall if they go full go from week one. I'm fine with it. I'm not going to be like worried and, oh my God, Michael Carter got half the work in week one. I expect it. I want it. I want that to happen. That should happen. If I was the coach, I would do that to keep Brees Hall healthy and unleash him at a, at a proper pace and send him on his way to fly. Let him fly. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You got to make sure you let a player fly at the right time. Brees Hall 
checks every box to be the next Jonathan Taylor. He can catch. I don't care what college stats say. I know what my eyeballs say. I know what the combine says. I know what my predictive analysis is telling me, my gut instinct, my eyeballs. I know what I'm looking at, and this is a bona fide three down back that could be a top five running back in the NFL and in fantasy football. I feel the same way about Kenneth Walker, but his ADP and situation are a little bit different, and he's a little more entrenched in getting the early down work out of the gate, but Kenneth Walker will take it away from him, not to mention Penny can't stay healthy. Kenneth Walker is a whole nother video, and his ADP is so late, we don't need to compare them because Kenny Walker is going around six, seven, eight, and you can steal him away. He's, a, he's even a bigger steal than Brees Hall, but it's because he's going later. Let's stick on Brees Hall right now. Brees Hall, to me, I would pay. Don't tell anybody, please, but I would pay. I would pay top 14 to 18 overall value if I had to. I don't have to. And for the person typing right now, you can't take Brees Hall. You can't take Brees Hall 14 to 18, Smitty. Are you not listening to what I'm saying? Don't tell anybody. And let's continue to steal him at 3.5 to 4.4. But if push came to shove, Michael Carter got hurt, I'd take him at the turn at 12 and 13. Brees Hall is going to be a top 5 to 10 running back. I don't have very many questions about it at all. I feel ultra confident in this prediction. He's got the wiggle behind the line of scrimmage. He's, he's shifty as anybody back behind the line deciding which way to run the football, finding the open space, which gap to run between. Once he chooses what he's going to do, then it's off to the races. He's not like Kenneth Walker, where he's knifing all over the field, changing directions. He is literally dancing behind the line of scrimmage very well. Picks a hole, boom, hits it. The dude goes either to the house or you gotta try and drag him down. Stiff arms, rolling people off. Nose for the end zone. Good catching ability. Could be easily be a 60 reception running back at the NFL level, easily. There aren't a ton of double digit rushing touchdown running backs in the NFL. Brees Hall already feels like a top five lock for double digit rushing touchdowns in the NFL. So as you can imagine, Brees Hall at, at 3.1, 3.5, 3.10, 3.12 doesn't really matter to me where third drafted player value is a home run. And if you are patient and lucky enough to get him in round four, imagine how much more excited I'm going to be for your pick. And if I was to pull it off and be patient enough, which I'm not, to wait until round four. Imagine how ecstatic I'd be if you told me, Smitty, I got Hall in round four. To the moon. To the moon. You, my friend, would be going to the moon. So that is by far my number one overall player that I'm targeting in round three. I love Herbert. As I mentioned, he's one of my favorite. I love Waddle and, and DK Metcalf. Where's my DK? I love DK and Waddle in round four. They're two of my favorite fourth round drafted players in 2022. These guys right here, the combination, whatever combination you can come up with. And Herbert, let's put Herbert in round four because he, he tends to fall to round four, maybe the top of round four. Let's spread him out a little bit. Let's say let's say Herbert is a kind of a 4.1 on staple. I'd, I'd take him in three, but you're better off to try and get him in four or to push your luck. And if he gets ends up getting sniped, then Burrow will be there probably through the end of four and sometimes into round five. A lot of these guys are going to go much earlier. They're on the screen for other reasons, but um, ETN is another great fourth round player. And if you get him in round five, I mean, you might as well walk straight to the bank. But ETN is one of my favorite fourth round players right now. I'd even take ETN again. Don't tell anybody. Same thing with Brees Hall. I'd take ETN in the third round. Mid third round on, like 3.5 on, ETN would be worthy of that pick to me. I think he could be some kind of, I don't want to say smaller version because that makes it sound like he's not going to have a big year. A unique Christian McCaffrey type of player that maybe scores more along the lines of like, you know, 6 to 10, 6 to 12 for running backs, not number one, but doing McCaffrey like things for the Jaguars. So fourth round value, so much baked in value there. I love AJ Brown in round three. He falls to round three quite often. 
He's an amazing round three pick. Even DK at the end of three feels like a steal. So if we're not talking four, we could talk late third and I'd still put I'd still put DK there. Kyle Pitts is a potential third round guy that I love grabbing at the end of round three, but more, more so in round four. If he falls to round four, he's a home run. I know the quarterback situation isn't ideal, but that's why we've got baked in, you know, risk. It, it'd be different. It's totally baked in. It'd be different if you're taking him at the top of round three or bottom of two. And then we talk about his quarterback risk. But when you bake that in and then you talk about pits in round four, you no longer have the luxury of saying, hey, what about his quarterback situation? That's the same thing with DK and, and Waddle. So DK is a second round player with Russell Wilson. He was. You could even call him late second round. Maybe you didn't like his ADP in late second round. Whatever, I don't care. DK had second round ADP at least at the tail end of the second round with Russell Wilson. When his ADP moves him over to the fourth round, you no longer have the luxury of saying, what about his quarterback situation? Hey, Smitty, you like DK in round four, but aren't you worried about his quarterback situation? Doesn't it concern you that he doesn't have Russell Wilson anymore? It it, it certainly is a, a good conversation, Bob, but you don't really have the luxury of asking me that question anymore in regards to his fourth round ADP. It is bake, 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 totally bake baked in. Boys. With no Gronk, Evans is a, a monster steal in round three. The later you get him in three, the more protected you are, like 3.1. I think he kind of earns that, you know, and I'm fine with that, but like 3.4, 3.7, you're a monster, monster steal. I won't go as far as to say I absolutely love and can't, you know, live without Gibby in round four, but let's let's accept that this is pretty darn good value. That, yeah, Gibby's got some injury risk. Gibby's got some situational and workload risk because there's a lot of running backs there. The team, we don't know if they're going to move the football down the field that well. His pedigree, he doesn't have a lot of college track record at all. He's got like 30 rushes and like 30 receptions to his name in college. So we don't know how well he's going to translate. And so far, we've been a little worried that it's going to translate into an every down back that can withstand multiple years. But fourth round value, again, is quite baked in. Because he has like second, like DK, he has second round potential value, but the risk involved is moving him to round four. So again, you don't have the luxury of being like, well, what about his situation and the backups and the running back situation and everything going on? You don't have the luxury of really saying that when he's not in round two, he's in round four. And I do like Gibby there. I almost say this is a fifth rounder. And that's where he becomes a monster steal. And I know we're doing fourth and third round only, but this is like borderline four. I love McLaurin. You get McLaurin as a fifth drafted player, like top of round five, almost round four. Absolutely love it. I had to mention it. I feel like Monty's becoming a very forgotten guy. He's a fantastic fourth drafted player. He's an amazing running back one in a no running back strategy where in rounds one, two, and three, you don't go running back at all. Then in round four, you take your first running back. But I will say, if Hall's available, I draft Hall over Monty. If, if ETN's available, I draft ETN over Monty. But Gibby Monty, I could go either way. DK Herbert Monty, I could go with position of need. I go best player available, but they're all very close. So position of need could, could win out. Would I take Herbert over Monty? Yeah. Would I take Burrow over Monty if I didn't need the running back help desperately, like I didn't perform a zero running back strategy to round four and I'm staring at Monty, I might have to take him and go later quarterback. Monty is fantastic fourth round material in 2022. And lastly, I mean, look, I like I like uh, Burrow, I like Herbert, I like Josh Allen more than I like Mahomes. Actually, we got to talk about Josh Allen next. But when it comes to fourth round value and the other three quarterbacks are gone, there is nothing wrong with Mahomes in round four. Mahomes, even without Tyreek Hill, and that risk is baked in just like DK and all the examples I've given. Mahomes has all the risk baked into fourth round value, and he can win a league even without Tyreek from round four. And Josh Allen is the last person we're going to talk about. He is a 100% fantastic third round draft selection. Whether you like early quarterback or not, I can't convince you of that. I absolutely will take Josh Allen anywhere beyond like 3.5, 3.6. I almost think I can't pass on him at 3.5 and beyond. But when I'm in a bind and I feel sniped and I'm sitting there with the one pick, I take JT. And at 25 and 24, my back-to-back -back second and third round picks, 
I have no qualms whatsoever drafting Josh Allen with one of those back-to-back 24-25 overall draft selections if I feel like the players I wanted aren't there because of his consistency and what he can bring to the table. I do think Herbert could outscore him this year, but there's a nice combination of taking both of them at their or around their ADP values to help safeguard uh, one of them busting. And I'm going to own enough of Herbert shares at the right value in round four, top of round four, or even mid round four, that it's acceptable to go the Josh Allen route in round three in a couple leagues or one league to make sure I diversify. But Josh Allen, 100%. I don't care what anybody says. Your boy Smitty is Smitty approving early quarterback when early quarterback means third round for Josh Allen. Smitty approved Josh Allen in round three. Just been Smitty approved. And there you have it, my my third and fourth round players I target. These guys win leagues, if you, especially if you get the right combination of them. Guys like Javante Swift, Lamb, uh, Walker's later, but these guys right here, they're all going to be, you know, first and second round draft selections. So ignore those guys. Don't think I left them off or, you know, I'm not going to talk about them. They're all first and second round draft selections. And like I mentioned, I was going to focus on the third and fourth round make sure you get on over to the fantasy football show.com get your text advice your text line stuff your one-on-one text advice with me i will text you one-on-one i leave audio messages every time i send you a message you can text me and then i'll hold down the microphone and i'll give you a one to two minute reply you're never going to get a little fragment where you you don't understand my tone or what i'm really meaning i leave you literally a minute to two minute long voice message in response to your question and and it's the most amazing service you're going to find when it comes to text advice one-on-one advice it's all for me i carry around two phones one is a phone just for you i work for you and get on over to underdog fantasy by going to this right here the fantasy football show.com or use promo code smitty get on over to underdog fantasy by going to the fantasy football show.com and start playing some best ball would you get into this best ball mania three that we're all doing and try and draft one of the best teams and go up against your boy smitty because we're all going to go up against each other if we make it to the, the later rounds and there's a two million dollar first place prize there's a one million dollar prize for second place and the payments are all the way down to like 400 place gets like a grand it's crazy that there's 10 million dollars in prizes get on over to the fantasy football show.com click on that underdog banner and and join plus we do best ball drafts and if you aren't prepared and logged in and you haven't gone to the fantasy football show.com and clicked on the underdog banner and gone through that quick ten dollar minimum deposit that's all you got to do and get signed up through my promo code smitty or the link and then you're ready to go when we're going to do best ball drafts late at night. So get on over and do that. I will see you all later. Now get out of here. This is the Fantasy Football Show with your host, Smitty.